first time how the system works because everything is just on conveyor belts. And this is so funny. Yeah, it's so funny. There's so many markets in this city. I don't know how you could possibly try everything. So we're back over near Westminster, as you can see the London Eye behind me. We're going to an area called Covent Garden. We're going to be walking around just kind of checking it out. But before we do that, we're going to head through Trafalgar Square. The first time we went through Trafalgar Square was at night, so we want to see it during the daytime. And also before we do that, we have a very special stop on the way, a little Harry Potter reference for all the Harry Potter fans out there. I know Sydney's really excited. <laughs> Oh, it's here? Yep. Fortunately, there's no longer a red telephone booth here, but this is exactly where Arthur Weasley took Harry Potter the first time he visited the Ministry of Magic for his hearing in Harry Potter and the Order of Phoenix. Again, go ahead, go back to the movie, cross-reference it. This is the exact location where they filmed it. Arthur Weasley and Harry Potter going into the visitor's entrance, which is a red telephone booth that descends into the ground. So these brown doors right behind me are where Harry, Ron, and Hermione kidnapped three ministry workers before infiltrating the ministry themselves in Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. If you go back and watch the movie and then just kind of cross-reference it to these doors, you'll see it right away. This is the exact location where they filmed it. So we have made it to Trafalgar Square. This is the Nelson Column right behind me, which is the main monument here in Trafalgar Square. It's just awesome to see all of the architecture around here. This is a pretty significant city square that celebrates a lot of Great Britain's war history. So Trafalgar is actually a reference to the Battle of Trafalgar, which was a naval battle against the Napoleonic forces of France. Um, so that is the reason that it has that name. This is also where after VE Day in World War II, this is where most of Great Britain celebrated. Uh, people were just lining the streets cheering going crazy it was probably a lot like what we saw at Times Square in New York after the US forces returned home so this was where a lot of the celebration happened you can see Big Ben all the way down uh, this street as well and it leads to Buckingham Palace another direction so this is kind of cool to see you know the the parade after VE Day it started here it went all the way down to where you see Buckingham Palace and people were just lining the streets going absolutely crazy a lot of history here the National Gallery is right behind us as well so you can imagine on VE Day, this fountain was full of people cheering and celebrating the end of the war. And this whole square was just jam-packed of people celebrating the end of a very long war. So we've come to this place called Kick and Cheese, and it's basically a conveyor belt with all these different types of cheeses and pairings. I think you just take one off the press and, and they charge you. They charge you? <laughs> we'll figure that part I out. I don't know. We'll see. So 
this is a place we really wanted to come to ever since we were kind of looking at what we're going to do uh, over the course of being in London. Uh, mainly because we are huge cheese people. I happen to be from Wisconsin, so this cheese is very near and dear to my heart. Um, this is not a mall called Seven Dials, so it's pretty cool. It's like this open market food hall. There's a lot of stuff downstairs as well, um, a lot of different food options, but we're going to start off here and see what we can get. We were kind of confused at first how the system works because everything is just on conveyor belts and it all looks delicious. So basically there's different colored plates and they have corresponding numbers so you can look up exactly what you're getting before you grab it. Uh, but like Sydney said, they're all color coded based on um, what the particular appetizer cheese plate is. So they're all color coded. Each color code has a different price to it. So we're gonna dig in and see what we can find. So you had to start off with number one. It just made the most sense. Um, what we did pick is a Gouda style cheese that is from Irish pastures and then sweet caramely flavors bring instant joy. So we've tried the cheese. The Gouda is absolutely delicious. There's also a pickled onion on the side. So just a nice little starter for us. Okay, Max picked first. Now it's my turn. What do I get? Ooh, what is that? That is number That's probably an expensive plate. It's a blue plate. It's the second most expensive. <laughs> it's a nutty. I want something with a jam. That's a cherry and amaretto jam. You had me at cherry and amaretto. Number four? Yeah. Lancashire? This looks like a big piece of cheese. Oh, what's 16? It's a blue plate. Sharpen creme, decadent AF. <laughs> What's number five? <laughs> um, <laughs> number five, I can't give up. I know. England's answer to the camembert, silky and unctuous, with mushroom and garlic notes. Paired with sweet garlic herbs. Actually, we should try number five when it comes back around. Okay. Ooh, what's this cream puff looking thing? It's not mocked. <laughs> it's the red plate. Which is called the Spenwood Nutty Hay Notes and a firm bite, sweet and salty, like its cousin Pecorino, paired with a cherry and amaretto jam. Mm. That's the jam. That's good. I love, I love pairing jam, pairing cheese with jam. It's like my favorite. Okay, so we're two plates in, the Gouda and the Spenwood with the Amaretto Jam. Everything A plus so far. I have my eye on number five. And the reason why is because it's a softer cheese, which we haven't tried yet. And it's paired with sweet garlic and herbs, which sounds really good. So I think when number five comes along, I'm gonna snatch it. So to finish off our little charcuterie experience, we're gonna have some salami that is made from ex-dairy cows. So apparently there's just a little bit more flavor. Looking forward to try it. Also some pickles on top. All right, so what was your favorite? Hmm. Of the cheeses, I'm gonna say that pecorino style that was with the, yeah, the with cherry. Yeah, the jam. You can't beat the jam. Yeah, the jam really added to it. I also like the Gouda a lot. 
and the beef was fantastic. But yeah, I'd say overall, I, I like the jam and the yeah. burrito. I think we picked all winners. Oh yeah, there was nothing I didn't like, yeah. for sure. I like the little pork and pickles. Nice touch. There's a couple more that we really wanted to try, but it gets a little more expensive as the plates go up, so probably as budget travelers wouldn't be wise, but there's one that looks like a cream puff, and it looks delicious, so we'll just imagine what that tastes like. Next time. Next time, maybe. All right, Covent Garden absolutely did not disappoint. It's so awesome how there's these pedestrian streets pretty much everywhere you walk. And it's kind of almost hidden right in between all of the tourist attractions. I honestly had no idea this was here because the other time I came to London, we basically just hit up all the tourist spots. We never really ventured over to this area, but it's so awesome. Coffee shops, restaurants, this cool market hall that you're just at, uh, shopping, pretty much everything you can imagine in like a pedestrian area, all pedestrian walking streets. Every street you go to, there's this cool store that you just didn't expect to kind of pops out of nowhere. So as we are walking east from Covent Garden, back to the east side where we're going to get some pizza, we we're kind of taking the long way around back to the underground station just because we love to take it all in. We've been doing that constantly where we just, maybe we have a stop that's right next to us, we'll go one or two stops further just to kind of take in everything around us. So we were on our way and then we saw this great little place called The George. It's just a, a very cool little pub right across the street from the Department of Justice here. And I think it's so cool how pub culture here is just very different than in the U.S. Here you walk in, you go right up to the bar, you order your beers, and then you go find a table. And it's all very casual, there's not like reservations every other place, there's not um, you know, rules on where you can sit, where you can't sit, where you can bring drinks, where you can bring food. If you want to order food, you have to find your table. A lot of the tables have table numbers, so then you just go right back up to the bar, order your food, and say I'm at table 26 or whatever it is, and they'll bring the food to you. This, the system just makes a lot more sense to me, and I love how all these pubs as well are just like these old style. You'll see a lot of paintings around, you'll see maybe a fireplace. Everything just feels very cozy, so you can find these pubs pretty much everywhere. Cheers to the George. Another pub that we found that we like. I don't think we found a pub that we haven't liked. 